Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to establishing true democracy and ending corporate domination. Our guests today are Jason Kafori of the Oregon Progressive Party's State Council and Dan Meek, legal advisor to that same party. So welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Thanks, right, yeah, you've both been on the show before, uh, so welcome back. Uh, so we want to talk about the Oregon Progressive Party. Let's just start out with why does it exist in the first place? Well, it's an interesting history, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work for Ralph Nader in Washington, D.C., and I ran some of his political operations. And uh, back in 2004, we tried to get Ralph Nader on the ballot here in Oregon. And the Democrats, uh, first they stopped us while well, we tried to have a thousand person convention and they sabotaged our efforts. And then they uh, attacked our signature gathering efforts and uh, eventually kept Ralph Nader off the ballot here in Oregon. And in 2008, Dan Meek and I created a, a, an idea. Uh, we were gonna create a new political party because it's actually easier to get a party uh, in Oregon on the ballot than it is to an independent candidacy. Oh, mm -hmm. And we created the Peace Party. Uh, and we put it on the ballot. Uh, got the signatures, and out of that, uh, the Peace Party nominated Ralph Nader uh, as its presidential candidate. And eventually, you know, this was at the, the height of Iraq War, Afghanistan War. Um, Peace Party made sense at that moment, but as the economic collapse happened, 2008 onwards, we realized that coming back to progressive uh, values, you know, as the old Progressive Party uh, had, you know, decades and decades and decades ago, uh, was where we thought the the, the energy uh, of the people uh, was, and we changed the name to mm -hmm. from Peace Party to Progressive Party. That was about 2010, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how how is that? Is that a complicated process to change names? Uh, you, it's not complicated, but y if you want to change the name of an existing a pl minor political party in Oregon, the the party itself can just declare itself to have a new name. Unfortunately, it automatically loses all of its members. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's a problem. So you have to start over <laughs> with mm -hmm. your membership. Oh, and okay. but um, uh, the, well, the Democrats can dissolve, for example, uh, mm -hmm. but they probably wouldn't do that. Uh, no, you have to start over. <laughs> um, from my point of view, um, I have been involved for a long time, for man, uh, since 1982, in utility rate matters in Oregon, and mm -hmm. go to the Oregon Public Utility Commission and argue about you know, utility rates and sue utilities for violating the law on utility rates. And what I found is that whenever I would win a case in court against utilities, they would run over to the legislature to get the law changed retroactively so that to wow. deem what they had, the illegal charges, in, and these are hundreds of millions of dollars, to deem the illegal charges to be legal. And of course the legislature almost always did exactly what the utilities wanted. Wow, of course. This is when there were massive Democratic majorities in both the Senate and the House and a Democratic governor. Mm -hmm. They do what any of the, whatever the utilities told them to do. And so that convinced me that we need another party in Oregon to actually stand up for the people. Mm -hmm. And since then, um, I've uh, been working a lot on campaign finance reform over the past Decades. Oh, 15 years or so, mm -hmm. because I because it became clear that you can't really accomplish anything in Oregon as long as the corporations run over to the legislature and get whatever they want. So uh, on campaign finance reform, I have found that the major, number one major opponent of campaign finance reform in Oregon is the Democratic Party of Oregon. Which I'm sure shocks many of our listeners. Uh, right. Because we assume, and the Democrats always say, that they strongly support limiting campaign contributions and generally uh, reforming that whole process. Well, in the Democratic Party, the grassroots of the party is just is fine. They're the, the grassroots people and the county yeah. central committees, they endorse our campaign finance reform measures all the time. The disconnect is between the grassroots of the Democratic Party and the elected office holders in the legislature and statewide office holders. Mm -hmm. These are the folks who take big money from, from corporations. They take even more money from corporations than they do from unions. You know, the amount spent on Oregon elections, campaigns, has increased by a thousand percent since 1996. Hmm. It's now ten times what it was in 1996. We, the, the Oregonian has reported that we have the most expensive per capita elections for the state legislature of any state other than New Jersey. 
It now costs, even for a, even running for the state house of representatives in any kind of a, a contested district or contestable district, the average amount spent by the top 10 candidates for the House of Representatives in Oregon in the last election cycle was how much? But this, you can win this election with 11,000 votes. <laughs> mm -hmm. How much did they spend on average? 400,000. Yeah. That's pretty outrageous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually spent 825,000 oh, each. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's each candidate, mm -hmm. top 10 candidates. For 11,000 votes? For 11,000 votes, that's like $80 a vote. Jeez. Wow. Now, and in, um, so it's, it is the, the very upper echelons of the Democratic Party that, in Oregon that opposes campaign finance reform. And they oppose it very vigorously. Not only do they oppose it publicly, but behind the scenes, they, they always challenge our ballot titles. They file lawsuits to try to get the, our, our measures off the ballot. Uh, they go to the, leg of course, the legis Oregon legislature never does anything on campaign finance reform. No. The Oregon legislature has never adopted limits on campaign contributions. They've repealed voter enacted limits three times, hmm. but never enacted limits. In 2001, they abolished all requirements that political ads in Oregon have any identification on them whatsoever as to where they're, as to where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. So, well, the, the amazing thing about campaign finance reform is that it's one of the few issues in our very polarized society these days that polls well from both conservative and liberal uh, places uh, in our society. Republicans like the idea of limiting big money in politics just as much as liberals do. Uh, not quite as much, but I mean, they, they, if, if you look at the polls, isn't it something about 65, 70 percent of Republicans support campaign finance reform? Uh, in general, right. Mm -hmm. And we had um, uh, a measure in the county, Multnomah County, in 2016 to enact uh, good limits on campaign contributions and expenditures mm -hmm. and require disclosure in political advertisements of the top funders of the campaigns. And that passed in Multnomah County by with an 89% yes vote. 89%. That's yeah. pretty strong. Now, the Republicans in Multnomah <laughs> County... I think the citizens <laughs> want it. Uh, I think so, yeah. We looked at the most Republican district, most Republican precinct in Multnomah County, and that was that was only a 72% yes vote. Okay, pretty strong still. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, well, Dunthorpe. We even got uh, Dunthorpe. seventy. Seventy percent. Seventy percent Dunthorpe. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, talk a little bit more about that Multnomah County election. Then we'll move on. Uh, sure. What, what What were the limits that were placed? Well, uh, you know, we we had some long discussions about what is a fair amount where somebody can still run for office and have the money that they need to effectively wage a campaign, but not be getting too many big checks uh, and, and you know t too easily uh, have the corruptible influence of money. Mm -hmm. And we looked at Seattle because Seattle uh, had passed, I believe, in 2015, right. a. Uh, a measure which lowered their limits, I think, from 700 to 500, uh, and we, you know, we, we we sort of batted it around, and you know, some people wanted 250, some people wanted 500, um, and I think we settled at 500 because we wanted to give everyone an opportunity to be able to mount a campaign, but at the same time. Um, limit, you know, the 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 thousands, thousands of dollar checks, mm -hmm. and as we see in Oregon. <laughs> Phil Knight just gave five hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. a few months back to Newt uh, Bueller running for for governor here. Uh, if one person can give half a million dollars to a candidate, uh, we're never going to have fair elections, and we're never going to have an election field where people feel like there is a level playing field that makes them willing to jump into the arena mm -hmm. and, and run for office for the sake of you know representing the people and not big money interests. Right, well, yeah, and, 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 and it discourages voters from voting because it's like, well, how, how, do, you, how do you outvote a half million dollars? Well, this is not unusual. Um, of course, Phil Knight, a couple of years ago, donated $250,000 to the uh, John Kitzhaber campaign. Mm -hmm. There wasn't Neil... Uh, no, it was Kit Sopper, right, I'm pretty Kitsopper. sure. Yeah, and, 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 then, and then they got the Nike deal through right afterwards, remember? Uh, yes, uh, right. Which, which yes. Uh, guaranteed Nike extremely favorable tax treatment for 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but in past years, these kinds of large contributions on the order of three to $400,000 each uh, are not unusual in governor's races. For example, uh, many 
um, a governor candidate to receive such contributions, mainly from timber company executives, usually the Wents, Rod Went and Richard Went and of Gelled Wind, mm -hmm. and also from ADEC, from the executives of ADEC, and which is a medical equipment manufacturer in um, in Newburgh. Mm -hmm. You so know, I was Newburgh. thinking about this the other day. Where would we live in a society if you didn't know who was giving the money? Like, at least we have Orstar so that we can publicly report uh, yeah. where the money's coming from. But imagine a system where there was no keeping track of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, Orstar is not, is not easy to keep, keep track of because Oregon has a, allows something that most states don't allow, and that is what's called, what are called pack-to-pack -pack transfers. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you look up the, the Orstar account for any individual candidate, you will see uh, for example, a candidate for the legislature, you'll often see, let's say it's a uh, uh, Democrat running for the House, you'll see that they got a chunk of money from Future PAC. So then you have to look up Future PAC to see their, where their money came from, and then you will see that their money came from 50 or 60 other PACs. And so you, then you look up each of those PACs, and many of them have a predominance of their funds from other PACs. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to spend hours and hours of, of drilling down to, to see where the, the money actually came from. Mm -hmm. So our system is, not, is really not very good. And when it comes to independent expenditures in particular, the Corporate uh, Accountability Foundation uh, determined that Oregon has the worst system for disclosure uh, uh, of independent expenditures except for six other states. Okay, all right. So I, I want to stop talking about uh, campaign finance reform, even right. though I know it's the party's major activity uh, at the moment. Other than, just very briefly, there are two efforts right now going on by the party to change the system. So briefly, talk about, talk about, talk about the state measure, and Dan, if you would talk about the, uh, the city measure. Well, we had a terrible decision in 1997 by the Oregon Supreme Court, which equated the free speech clause in our state constitution with uh, basically saying that, that giving money uh, to, to candidates was the equivalent of free speech. Mm -hmm. And therefore, putting limits on how much you give is a violation of the state constitution. Yeah. Now, there are 37 other states that have nearly identical language in their state constitutions, and they all have limits on contributions. So this is a real outlier of an opinion. Uh, and unfortunately, until we either change our state constitution uh, or uh, have the Supreme Court change their 1997 decision, we're going to continue to have establishment people say contribution limits are unconstitutional here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with a statewide measure, uh, which, again, you may be able to, I don't remember the exact language that's in there, but basically it, it gives us the ability to amend the Constitution to be able to put limits on contributions. And it looks like, David, you might have the exact language I right do. here in front of you. I do. There it is. Huh. Yes, we the people uh, in the state of Oregon, uh, Article 1, uh, Section 8 of the Constitution, we add the following. Laws consistent with the freedom of speech, guarantee of the United States Constitution, may regulate contributed uh, contributions and expenditures of any type or description to influence the outcome of any election, provided that such laws are adopted or amended by an elected legislative body by a three-fourths vote of each chamber or by initiative. So, right. Right. Uh, and it's wildly popular. People would like to yeah. have campaign contribution right. limits. Yeah. And uh, so we are actively in the process of collecting uh, a thousand signatures. Uh, we've filed for this 2018 uh, ballot, but unfortunately, as oftentimes happens, uh, almost every time, the Democrats challenged us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, was it Trent Lotz, the former head of the Democratic Trent Party? Lutz. Lutz, Lutz, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he challenged us along with some other folks. And so now we're in a position where, because of that challenge and waiting for the Supreme Court, we don't have time to get the hundreds of thousands of signatures needed by this 2018 election. So we're starting the process back up to go for 2020. Right, and, and it's starting you, early. Starting so, early this time, yeah. And if you want to sign the prospective petition, go to honest-elections.com. Mm -hmm. The clearinghouse for election, <laughs> for honest election information right. in Oregon. Yeah. We, right. we, we, we did yeah. a lot of thinking about what the name should be, and honest elections was one that really resonated with people. Mm -hmm. right. And it's yeah. true. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, t talk about what's happening in the city. Um, well, the, the measure that passed in Multnomah County applies only to Multnomah County elections, that charter amendment, which is the one Jason was talking about, limits 
contributions that candidates can receive to $500 per individual and requires that all the contributions come from individuals and not from, from corporations or entities. Um, and has other provisions, small donor committee provisions, so that you can have a, a group that, uh, that accumulates very small donations from individuals and then can contribute those to, uh, to candidates. So um, the, the city of Portland elections are actually cost far, cost far more than the Multnomah County yes. public office elections. Typically now, in a mayor's race, the, the, um, the winning candidate uh, spends over a million dollars in 2012, I think it was. Um, Three candidates, each raised over, each a, million raised over bucks. a million bucks. Wow. Okay. Uh, and even city council races now uh, typically are coming in over five hundred thousand. So it's a, and they take big money from de from real estate developers primarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and real others. estate's booming here in Portland as we all see around mm -hmm. us. <laughs> so yeah. what we now have on uh, our collecting signatures on is a Port city of Portland charter amendment to do the same thing: limit contributions to five hundred dollars per individual, outlaw all other contributions, and require that political ads identify their largest the largest contributors to the campaign mm -hmm. you know and based on Seattle again uh, the mayoral candidates last round in Seattle the top guys were only raising seven hundred thousand plus uh, and that's because they have five hundred dollar limits there oh, yeah. um, you know being able to take checks of you know one thousand thousand twenty five hundred five thousand ten thousand dollar checks that's how you get up to a million and a half dollars mm -hmm. uh, and I think almost they all raised close to a million and a half, didn't they, that election cycle, Jefferson Smith? It was over a million for each of the three in the primary alone Yeah, uh, back wow. in and about six years ago. Okay. All right. So we've got, we've got the state effort and we've got the city effort, mm -hmm. and people can go to, what was that website? Honest-elections.com. Uh -huh. All right. Great. And, uh, and Join our from effort. There. We, 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 we are going to be hitting the streets, mm -hmm. hitting the pavement. we got to get, for the, the city initiative, we need to have 50,000... Uh, rough uh, signatures because uh, we need 34,000 valid and we need to have all of that done by July 6th. Okay. So right. we've got about 15 and a half weeks now. Right. So the message is don't delay, join the effort now. Don't, don't delay, join the effort, yes. Okay. And say that they came to us because they were watching the populist right. Yes. dialogues. Right, yes, right, yeah. So uh, back to the Progressive Party. Uh, obviously, the major issue that you deal with is this question about money and politics and, and how to control that. What else? Well, um, we have a table of issues for where the two major parties are on one side and the progressive right. parties on the other. All right, let's talk that's, about the table. That's at progparty.org, mm -hmm. uh, the main website. The, um, uh, we are uh, we do take positions that are quite different from the from all of the uh, from all the major parties uh, in Oregon, particularly on environmental issues. We're in favor of a carbon tax, which the Oregon legislature has not enacted. We talked or, a lot about, but haven't done. The mm -hmm. Oregon legislature is, of course, um, uh, majority Democratic in both the House and Senate, and and of course the major and of course the. That's a Republican, Democratic, House and Senate, yeah, and Democratic Democrat. governor. Mm -hmm. So as, as Jason say, they talk a lot about doing stuff and then don't do it. <laughs> Um, we have, been, have taken positions on controlling diesel emissions in Oregon, which Oregon has just about the worst diesel uh, air pollution of any state in America because our, our laws allow old diesel engines to run in Oregon, which are banned in California and Washington. Yeah, so I, I actually learned this because I was, uh, uh, so what happened was the corporations that own the big trucks that, that pollute diesel that are old, they all have their cars the trucks come to Oregon because the laws are, so basically we're funneling between the two laws in Washington and, and California we're funneling all that diesel right into our state uh -huh. right, right. <laughs> okay right. Um, so as those trucks cannot be used in those states yeah so they, 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 they said they, they have those trucks start Oregon operating around and here yeah. and right. the, okay. the statistics about health effects especially living within you know 100 200 feet of a freeway are just Devastating. I mean, you know, the mm -hmm. the the impact on people's lives is, mm -hmm. is is a huge, you know, asthma rates and all kinds of stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. What what else? Well, we in favor of uh, fifteen dollar minimum wage immediately, which Oregon has not adopted. Mm -hmm. We're in favor of for it. for everybody in the state. For not, everybody. Not, and I think uh, again, not tier. to talk about our, our northern neighbor, but I believe Seattle did pass fifteen dollars. Seattle today. did pass it. Yes. Uh, Washington has limit, has limits on campaign well, contributions, well, by the way. <laughs> as does California. Yeah, Washington has so many good things going for, uh, versus Oregon here. Yeah, uh, we are. We need to reform Oregon's tax system. Oregon still has the lowest taxes on businesses of any state in America. 
it has the highest income taxes on families living at the poverty line. Uh, it's actually not quite high. It's regressive. It's in the top three highest uh, taxes on families living at the poverty line. So mm -hmm. uh, we need to change the tax system. Um, we're also in favor of creating a state bank yeah. to invest. I mean, the state has investment funds of over $90 billion. Uh, much of that money now is invested in vulture capitalists, uh, corporate raiders, takeover artists, hedge funds. Um, and all, the, all the good guys. All the good guys. We're, we're funding. The heroes. We're public <laughs> money. Yeah. And we think that should be, um, that can be invested in, in Oregon businesses instead. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, are in favor on, uh, more on the national level, of getting out of the wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, and not starting new ones. It's amazing to think that Afghanistan, we don't even talk about it, but the war's been going on for yeah, yeah. nearly 20 years now. And the biggest right. expansion of the, of the war in Afghanistan was undertaken by the Obama administration. They mm -hmm. expanded it greatly and then, and then, and then dialed the surge. down. The, they yeah. surged in it. The surge. It was the second surge in Afghanistan. Yeah. And then yeah, we, 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 we never have a problem about generating public outrage at what Republicans do, but when Democrats do the same thing, uh, most people are quiet. It's a more muted response. It's a muted response, right. yes. Um, we are in favor of doing a lot of in infrastructure investment and jobs for all in, in a works project administration uh, type of thing. Uh, we're against Wall Street bailouts. We're against fossil fuel exports from Pacific Northwest ports. We're against train transportation of fossil fuels. Um, no nuclear power. That's a big no one. No nuclear no power. Mm -hmm. now, Germany's uh, actually phasing out all nukes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's other countries that are forward thinking on global warming are making big, dramatic moves. Mm -hmm. We're relicensing old plants that aren't safe. <laughs> well, well, yeah, and, and most people don't realize that just across the border in Washington State, they have the Columbia Generating Station, which is the only nuclear, only operating Hanford? nuclear. Uh, it's uh, at Hanford. It's at, Han it's it's at, Hanford, at yeah. Hanford, and, and uh, that one is, um, continues to uh, operate. They were all um, built in the 60s, uh, yeah. 60s, 70s, and, and, and you look now, they're, they're trying to build a couple more nukes. Did they actually build those ones in South Carolina? They were no, in the process. No, no, no. and uh, the, David mentions the Columbia Generating Station, better known as Whoops 2. Whoops 2, that's right. Yeah. That was Whoops 2. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, built largely in the late 70s, early 80s, came online about 1983, 84. And so it's very old. And one very concerning thing is the, um, under both Democrats and Republicans, is the relicensing of very old nuclear plants. Yes. They continue to operate despite the fact that there's there's no good science about deterioration of their systems over time. The um, what, we're it, gonna, what, what percentage of our of our country's power comes out of nukes? Do we know? Five maybe. Is it that little? Yeah, it's not it's very little. much. The the other interesting thing you might have noticed in the news just a day or so ago was the revelation from the National Security Agency that Russian hackers right, had infiltrated yes. nuclear power plants. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Now they did. Well, I read the way I read the article. It said they didn't go in and figure out how to turn off the things. <laughs> they just went in to learn how the systems work. They, oh, were, just, yeah. they were just experimenting. But it is scary to think of. I mean, cyber wars are probably going to be the future outcomes uh, mm -hmm. uh, of attacks. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if they can shut down all of our energy grids. And, right. and you'll recall when when we were trying to get the Trojan nuclear plant shut down back in the late 80s and early 90s, how all of the powers that be said, oh, it'll cause, you shut down Trojan, it'll cause massive rolling blackouts oh, and gosh. voltage instability yeah, uh -huh. and stuff. And of course, then the plant killed itself in November of, 2000, of 1992. It just, you know, it, it sprung a bunch more leaks and so it had to shut down and guess what? There was no, no voltage instability, no, no massive blackouts and, you know, right, because yeah. of it. Yeah, so we've got, we've got uh, about three minutes left. We're also against um, uh, corporate-dominated trade deals yeah. mm -hmm. like uh, TPP, NAFTA, the World Trade or Organization, things that allow corporations to override national policies on environmental protection, consumer protection, and labor rights. Um, the Democrats aren't against those. I, I thought it was funny no. the other day uh, when the, the, the European Union was mad about Trump's tariffs. They said, oh, we're going to go to the WTO to go say that's, oh, not, yeah. that's not free trade. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, look what we got ourselves into mm -hmm. here. Right. We're also in favor of Medicare for all or a, a, some other single payer system. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Democrats aren't in favor of that. They, they gave us um, 
uh, a, a different system that is now. And to be fair, we should say yeah. the, the, the Bernie wing of the party nowadays has adopted some of these issues. Mm -hmm. but Bernie, Bernie wing is not in control. They're the not in control of the party, yeah. as we right. saw. Yeah. The Hillary Clinton uh, portion of the party still runs yeah. the, the major party. And so many of these positions that we take are actually supported by a, a broad um, the majority. A mm -hmm. majority of, of the grassroots people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not I mean, by the, I, I, the, the, uh, there were a lot of flaws to Obamacare, but one of the things that I think w was its best long term outcome was putting all these new people onto uh, Medicaid and people realizing that the government sponsored health care saves lives. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that, I think, will, will force the public opinion to to continue to push for a Medicare for all type system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, as Trump kicks people off of Medicaid, they yeah, will, they'll, they'll start to understand it. Yeah. Um, Once you give something to somebody. It's hard to do Yeah, it's back. like Social Security. Right, yes. Who doesn't want to oh, get right, their check? Yeah, right, yeah. And one other thing we're against is government promotion of gambling. Yes. Hmm. Um, okay. Oregon, Oregon is very dependent on the lottery and it spends uh, tens of millions of dollars every year uh, encouraging people to gamble. Sure. And mm -hmm. that's effectively, uh, once again, uh, it's a, a regressive tax. Mm -hmm. I saw this really sick stat the other day in the Oregonian. Five percent of the gamblers on the video poker provide over half of the money. So you have this very small select of incredibly addicted people that are, the, the state of Oregon, through our own taxpayer dollars, are marketing and, and promoting these people to be addicted to gambling. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. a horrible and that story. Kind of gambling literally is addictive because of the of the sounds and the and the and the pulsating lights mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. you know, that's part of video poker. It it is it is hypnotic. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we are at the end of the conversation already. So thank you, Jason, for being thank here. Thank you so much, David. Right. Thank you, Dan. Always All a right. pleasure. Okay, great. So we're we're gonna have both of them on our next program so in about a week or so you'll be able to see them again uh, talking very specifically about the details of the campaign finance reform so uh, so uh, Dan and Jason are both with the uh, Oregon Pro uh, Progressive Party and if you want Dan's kind of an independent party guy too uh, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> right yeah so if you want to learn more about the Oregon Progressive Party go to their website at www.progparty.org and um, Thank you for watching the show, and hopefully we'll see you again next week or very soon. Thank you. Bye.